Hey guys, welcome back to Patience Over Profits. I'm Brooke and today we are at one of our favorite local restaurants to meet with some of our dearest friends and patients of the Mountain Town Farmers Alliance. After that, we are heading back to the country to get a sneak peek at Tony's Outdoor Cannabis Garden. We will finish up at the Central Michigan Cancer Project Donation Garden where Tyler will give us a few tips on planning and we will also get an updated tour of the garden. Now let's head inside. Hi guys, I'm Mark Rebel. I'm a cancer survivor here for about four years now. And uh, been down this journey, learned a lot. I've learned uh, some of the things to do and not do. And, uh, and it's kind of led me to this road of trying the cannabis oil and seeing what's new and wonderful there that I haven't tried yet. Um, Typically, I've gone in the past four years, just gone through all the standard uh, medical procedures that, that you would see with somebody that has bladder cancer. Um, some of the traditional treatments I've had uh, would be um, something called CBG, which was a, uh, a method they used for um, destroying cancer, and it was also the cure for polio and so um, basically the concept with most modern medicines today is you just take a pill and you nuke destroy what's ever there and hopefully the good stuff is still still left standing and so with my journey I've kind of learned that there's there's other methods too and I'm not saying anything bad about today's modern medicine and what uh, is the proper method for treating. I think uh, when you go to talk about treating cancer, you, you do all inclusive and you do modern medicine and maybe some traditional Eastern medicine, you know, plant-based and a healthy diet. Because if you think, you know, you're coming into this and just gonna do one thing and it's gonna be gone, you may be in for a surprise. If you're, you know, taking cannabis oil and you're feeding your face with sugar and processed foods, then it's probably going to take a lot longer to treat. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. My name is Dale Dutcher. I have tard eyes. I've been taking marijuana ever since the doctors said there was nothing they could do. And so far, it's gotten me off six medications that I would take. I no longer take medications for sugar diabetes or anything for IBS. Or really? So you're completely off of your insulin and you don't take no any pills? pills? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. So what about for pain? Do you take anything for pain anymore? I take uh, THC, CBD. That's about it? That's it. How do you take your THC? Is it... Uh, do you use it as a topical, or is it more of a, do you ingest it? I take capsules. Of a concentrated form of Concentrated to see yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, that's really good to hear. I think that, you know... you got to have pharmaceuticals. <laughs> how do you think you've been treated over the past years from the pharmaceutical industry? As good as they could, I guess. Yeah. Do you think that um, the pharmaceutical industry has the best medical interest of the patient and their brain when they're doing this, or do you think it's more of a for-profit industry? Well, it's definitely for-profit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. How many of uh, you... Other, otherwise, they would have had marijuana or a chemical. That's right. So, how many different medications have you been on? That's my life. I don't know. <laughs> I've been on six different uh, kinds of pain medication. Yeah. And do you feel like those ever took care of the problem, or did they just kind of hide it? I could ne never really tell a difference. Right. This is my wife, Gail Dutcher. She's my caregiver now. Hello. <laughs> okay, um, Mountain Town Alliance is founded by my, our grandson, 
and it has helped us tremendously. It has gotten rid of his insulin. He used to take medicine for gout. He doesn't take that anymore. He had IBS, and that is completely gone now. So, and his anxiety is getting better. So it's all good for us. And he's off on all of that pain medication. He has been on trazodone. He's been on uh, morphine. He's been on six different Tylenol 4s, Tylenol 3s. He's been on so many medications and he's completely off on that now. And which has made his mind a lot clearer. And as far as Tardive is concerned, that will never go away. He'll always have his movements. But it's helped him, I think, in his life as far as adjusting to everything. Um, his anxiety is getting better. He's got a little ways to go on that. But he's doing much better on cannabis than he has on anything else. I just wish that more people would be able to take cannabis and still be able to afford cannabis. It's expensive, but with Tyler's Mountain Time Alliance, they are helping so many people, and we are so proud of him for that. What she was saying there, then these guys basically are taking something that is expensive and time consuming, and they're donating their time and their resources to, to making this happen. I just think it's a fantastic thing that they're doing for the community. That they're standing up and, and not being the profit-hungry corporation that typically runs these businesses. Um, I hope that one day we'll see modern medicine accept cannabis for the powerful medicine that it really is. Um, gotten this far with our regulations and everything, but you know, until until we see the day where a doctor says, hey, take two turmerics and have some tea and call me in the morning, then we're still using 40-year-old technology for cancer that we know are, there's better alternatives out there. And we're hoping that someday that we can have insurance pay for pay cannabis. For yeah. Exactly. That's what we need. That's right. But if we don't have people like Tyler and Tony um, that is helping people, I mean, they have no other choice, you know. We should be very thankful that we have groups Absolutely. like this. How has your treatment with the cannabis been this far? It's been pretty good. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I kind of was a, a hippie back in the day, so I knew what to expect. There wasn't you know, any surprises as far as the, uh, the effects. Psych psychotic effects to it. it. It took a while. You know, the first time, I, a few times I took it, it's like, okay, nothing's happening here. And then uh, Tyler said, well, maybe you're not getting full, full amount. I said, well, maybe you're right. So I went home and took what was the full amount. Then I noticed right away that uh, I'm now taking the full amount. And I'm pretty stoned. <laughs> uh, Do you feel like cannabis has been a positive influence since you started? Yeah. Well, we're going to know a lot more in late July and August when I go back to my oncologist and they put the scope thing in there and check it all out. So I think it's been pretty positive. I just feel like I'm finally doing what I should have been doing all along. Right. So do you think the quality of living is a little bit better with uh, the more natural treatment rather than a pharmaceutical yeah. treatment? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I'm sleeping great. Uh, I haven't slept this good in forever. Um, I, I've noticed some side benefits that I wasn't anticipating. Uh, my allergies have gotten better. And I'm breathing better because I have a mild case of asthma. So I'm not taking anything for that right now. We'll see how that goes, but that was just a side benefit. So how did you hear about Mountain Town Farmers Alliance, and how are they helping you? 
I heard about it from my grandson. I was just researching uh, Rick Simpson oil and uh, just happened to run across a thing on Facebook. They were doing a little fundraiser and uh, I looked at the wording and how he, you know, I could tell he was into organic planting and that's right up my alley and I said, this is somebody I want to pursue. And, and I have not been disappointed. He's, he's a great guy. And they've, they've done a lot as far as research up front, you know, that guys like us would take years and years and they've just got it all together and you know, you know they know what they're talking about. With these guys, uh, it was just, um, started off as a little fundraising thing and I can see they had bigger plans and so I was very interested in meeting up with them and they were just as interested in making sure I was an upstanding guy that really did have cancer and was looking for alternative methods. And so we came here to the barn door and uh, had great service here and met Tyler and Tony and just hit it off right away. And I'm really happy with what they've provided me so far. That's, that's all I can say. And the proof's in the pudding, we'll, we'll know soon enough. Barn Door is one of the amazing sponsors to the Central Michigan Cancer Project's donation cards. What are the, some of the things that people should expect when coming in to see it? Well, we have uh, Made in Michigan Monday, where we focus on a lot of uh, local stuff. So we have about 32 local beers made in Michigan. Um, also, for that night, from 5 to 9, you can try them for half price. Uh, we have all of our buns from Cops and Donuts. We get our burger from Smith & Sons. Um, we have all of our game, gaming equipment in here from Dolphin Coin, so we try to do as much local as possible. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, sounds like you guys do a really good job of supporting the community around you. You have to, because if you don't, you will not have a community. Right. So that's well, the purpose behind that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for letting us come out here today, and uh, I appreciate you making it feel like home. Not a problem at all. So we're out here at Tony's garden. So Tony, tell us what's going on here. All right, we have a 30 by 30 foot structure going on. Okay, so in each one of these holes, we have a full yard of soil. It's a mixture of our compost, perlite, and topsoil with some worm castings added in for nitrogen. got the whole structure complete. We just got to wrap it with our welded wire fencing and uh, chicken wire, which here we're gonna just bury down on the outside instead of filling our holes with it. And on this side over here, we're gonna have to put up some greenhouse plastic to cover it from the public view, from anybody from the road to be able to see what's inside our garden. We'll have our plants in the ground by the end of this week. So hopefully next week we'll be able to come back and I'll give you an updated garden tour. Hey guys, what's up? We're back out here at the Central Michigan Cancer Project's Donation Garden. I'm just going to give you a little update and uh, that way you can see where we're at and what's going on out here. So last week we had a couple of guys come in and they finished up our fence and uh, the surrounding structure. We had a door made and we got a lock put on it so everything is now up to the legal code as far as Michigan goes. So we planted some plants already out here and we saved one so we could show you guys exactly how it's done.
Um, if you look over here, we have a couple of bigger plants that we brought out. We've been vegging these for about two and a half months. Um, the strains that we're using out here in our garden hold a lot of contents as far as medicinal value goes. And uh, we've specifically picked out strains that are gonna benefit our cancer patients the most. Um, let's head on over here and uh, check out how we transplant. All right guys, so we're here, we're at one of our beds right here, and we're gonna show you exactly how we get these plants in the ground. You wanna be sure that you got a nice deep hole that's gonna be deep enough so the top of your plant isn't gonna be sitting above your soil level. So we've got that dirt all pushed back and out of the way. And the next step that we're gonna do is take our root inoculant. And we're gonna sprinkle this white widow on the bottom of this hole. And what that does is, is when it has direct root contact, um, it helps develop mycorrhizae, fungi, bacteria, colonies in your soil, which helps for the nutrient uptake, the root development, and to create a more overall symbiotic relationship with your plants. So we're gonna take this, and you could take up to a quarter teaspoon, which is the recommended dose, and you wanna sprinkle it directly where your plant is gonna be sitting. And this just ensures that you're gonna have that direct root contact and then you're not wasting any of your powdered nutrients. Once you have a nice coating on the bottom there, you're gonna take your plant, tilt it to the side, and push down on the bottom. That's gonna help you remove the pot, and you wanna be careful that you're not hurting or harming the plant in any way. Then you wanna gently take your plant and set it down in your hole that you've excavated for it. What we do is we break around the top layer of this soil to expose some of the roots right here on the top. And knocks down some of this micro life we already have in our pots down in the soil. Then we go ahead and we fill in the outside just so it gets to the top. And then you give your plant a nice little press down and set it in its final place. Then we just finish up and comb the rest of the soil in so it's nice and evenly spread across the top. And then what we're going to do is follow it with a dose of compost tea that we've aerated for the last two days. And it's just going to get our soil jump started and ready to go for the season. So that does it for the update with the Central Michigan Cancer Project's Donation Garden. We'll get you next week with another update.